Good morning. Hope everybody's good on this rainy Sunday morning. And those of you at home, hey, you don't have to worry about getting out in the rain. So uh, we've got lots of announcements this morning. So the first one is men's club. Men's breakfast is back on. So next Sunday, I know all the men are looking forward to being back with uh, being back together and getting some good, good eats. So if you'll be down in the fellowship hall at 745 next Sunday morning, and I think they start eating at 8 o'clock. And uh, men, y'all excited about some good home-cooked meal? A little bit, you know. <laughs> no, but it's good. So uh, if you've never been to men's breakfast, I invite you to come out and to uh, join them in some good uh, eating, some biscuit and gravy and all that sort of stuff next Sunday morning. And now Miss Helen is going to come up and speak about Circle 2 and some of the awesome stuff they've been doing in the community. Good morning, everybody. Um, do you all know? Oh, no. Do you all know? <laughs> I didn't know they were taking pictures that day. Um, do you all know what a hen party is? When I was a little girl and my mother would go, would be ready, getting ready to go to a meeting at the church, a, a circle meeting or something, my dad would always joke and say she was going to a hen party. And that was what the men called the women's groups. Well, the, I never did quite understand what he meant by that, but at some point I did. Well, he thought they were just going out to gossip and talk and, you know, have fun. But as I got older, I found out that really wasn't what it was. <laughs> and so uh, Circle 2 is... Um, has been very uh, busy in the last couple of months. We have gone over to the care mission to see what we can do to help them uh, by volunteering. And there are uh, several people who have signed up to do that. Uh, the care mission is not uh, doing clothing anymore. They're just mostly doing food. And so uh, it's, it's a little bit easier maybe for us to volunteer for that. So we'd like for uh, anybody to take the opportunity to volunteer with them. We also have uh, signed up to do backpacks for the kids at the schools. To, this, these are uh, <coughs> backpacks that are packed up with food for them to take home over the weekends or over holidays when they might not uh, have food at home. Uh, the YMCA sponsors this, and they uh, have groups that come and, and help pack up those bags. So we're looking forward to that. Uh, we are meeting on November, it's the third Tuesday in November, I've forgotten the day, the third Tuesday in November uh, and in the Fellowship Hall for a meeting with Kendra Phillips, who uh, operates the care mission. And we are going to uh, have a sh baby shower so that um, we can help supply them with the, the needs that they have for the babies that, that are uh, coming in for help. So it's not a hen party. It, it is kind of fun. And we do eat and we do talk, but we also do good things uh, for the Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Miss Helen. And if you're a lady and you're interested in being part of Circle Two, uh, you can contact one of the ladies. Uh, you can talk to Miss Helen, and they can tell you how to get plugged in with that ministry. Uh, and our fall festival. So our church council met, and we uh, got a game plan together for our fall festival. So this year we're going to do a drive-through um, thing for fall festival. So we're going to make our our goal is to make 2,000 goodie bags. And so we need lots of candy donations and little Debbie donations, and we need some volunteers. And so the, the, the drive through Fall Festival is going to be on Wednesday, October the 28th. And then uh, we're going to have a packing party the Sunday beforehand on Sunday, October the 25th. So we're going to need, you know, we want to do 2,000 bags, so we're going to need lots of help to stuff all those bags, and we're going to need lots of candy to, to put inside those bags. We felt this would be the best way that we could still uh, show the love of Jesus to our community as well as um, keep it safe with uh, the virus and all of those sort of things. So if you have any questions, you can contact Nydia uh, or myself, and we have uh, buckets around the church that you can drop in your candy donations on a Sunday, or if you'll just check our office hours in the digital bulletin, you can drop a bag off at the church office as well. 
youth coming up in uh, not this Sunday, but next Sunday, October the 18th, we're going to have a youth bonfire at the Shields home. So we ask that you bring uh, chips or something sweet. Um, we're going to have hamburgers and hot dogs that night, and it'll be a great time. Uh, the address is on the screen, and for those of you at home, I'll send out a remind message uh, so you can be a part of that. And the youth had an awesome night this past uh, Wednesday, and we had a lot of fun on the inflatables and did some good time, kind of a kick kick off for being back in person meeting, so that was a good uh, meeting with them. Uh, Operation Christmas Child is here, so we invite you to pick up a box if you haven't done that uh, yet, and the drop-off, uh, we'll need the boxes back the week before Thanksgiving, so you have a few weeks left uh, to still get your boxes together, and if you need to pick up a box still and you're not uh, able to do it on a Sunday, you can contact the church office. And then lastly, uh, Randall's uh, Zoom Bible study is back on for this coming Thursday on October the 15th. So we invite you to join Pastor Randall for that Bible study uh, at home, uh, from your home. Those are all the announcements that we have this morning, and Pastor Randall's going to come for our welcome. Good morning, church. We are glad to be with you. If we are worshiping in person or online or on WQCH, we are glad to be with you on this Sunday morning. Hear this call to worship. The Lord is good. And God's steadfast love endures forever. Let us worship the Lord together. What is it that we believe? Well, this is what we believe as we unite in this historical confession of the Christian faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Morning, children. So this morning we're going to be getting ready for a party. So I've got my party hat on, or I've got it, it's a little too small for my head. 
And I've got goodie bags to give out to all the, the people. And I've got some delicious chocolate cake mix that I'm ready to make some, have a nice little cake for the party. And I've got some invitations already sent out and ready to go. So I've got everything that I need for my party. I'm just missing one thing that's kind of important. Do you think you know what it might be? The guests. That's right, all the people. And in the scripture this morning, Jesus gives a parable, right? He tells us a story about a wedding banquet and a wedding and uh, the king invites everybody to come to the wedding. And you know what some people say? They say, no, we're not coming. And they're kind of mean about it. And so these are important people that you think would come to the king's party, but they don't, they don't come to the party. So the king wants to uh, have a lot of people at the party. So he goes and he invites everybody to the party. It doesn't matter if they were homeless or if they were... Uh, a good person in the community, good or bad, he invites everybody to the party. And then everybody shows up to the party, and he only says that, hey, you got to come to the party, but you got to wear a certain outfit because that's what you have to do for the party. And there's somebody that's not wearing the right clothes, so they get told to leave. And so what kind of special clothes do you think Jesus would want us to wear to a party? I'll give you all a hint. It's only something that Jesus can provide for us. And this is kind of a, a deep thing, but the Bible talks about that we are covered in the blood of the Lamb. And the blood of the Lamb is Jesus, that he died on the cross for our sins. And that we, if we are covered, if we are clothed in Jesus' uh, love for us, then we can be in the party with God, right? That God invites everybody to the party in heaven one day with Jesus. And so this parable kind of helps us know that it's a free gift to everybody. It's an invitation to everybody, but we have to accept that invitation, and we have to be clothed with the blood of Jesus, right? Clothed with his love for us, and uh, then we're going to all be partying with Jesus, right? So let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you so much that your invitation is for all, for everyone that uh, there's nothing that we do, Lord, but it's what you have done for us. So, Lord, help us to accept your love this morning and to tell other people about your love as well. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. We want to remember Kevin Smith in our prayers, who's at Park Ridge Hospital. Uh, do you have people that you uh, want to share um, to remember in our prayers? Have you got anybody on you? Mind your hearts, I know it's hard to... And you too. So continue to remember all these persons in the hospital, those who are going through tests, uh, those who are experiencing very difficult times during this time, please remember them in your prayers. So I ask you to bow with me as we go to the Lord in a time of prayer. We and our ancestors have sinned. Our ancestors exchanged the glory of God for the image of a golden calf. They forgot God and their Savior who had done great things in Egypt. While our means are different, our compulsions are the same. Let us confess our brokenness for God in mercifulness, and God will forgive our sins. So we come to you, O Lord, knowing these things. You are our Lord and our God. You have brought us out of our Egypt out of our land of bondage, whatever that may be. And yet, our trust in you has shown to be fragile, easily crushed by our bent toward indifference, the dismal of our faithfulness as a result of our forgetfulness. Our trust is fragile, easily broken by the slightest pause, an answer to prayer not instantly given, a request for peace not immediately felt. Our trust is fragile, O oh God, easily displaced by gods of our own making, the God of self-sufficiency, chased at, our, at any cost, the God of illusion, persuaded in any form. God, we ask this morning that you would have mercy on us, and we come to you in the name of Jesus, our Lord, who says that if we are faithful to confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins 
and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. May we hear the good news in Christ's name that we are forgiven in Jesus' name. And to that we say glory to God. Nurturing God, you have never abandoned your children. Your steadfast love endures forever and your faithfulness throughout all generations. This morning we pray for those in our world whose trust have been broken through exploitation by people in power of abuse by those in intimate circles. We pray for those whose trust has been broken through abandonment by those who promise to stay or manipulation by those who refuse to let go. We pray for those whose trust has been broken through cold comfort in times of affliction or callous rebukes of those on the margins. We pray for those whose trust has been broken through the trauma of war or the chaos of assault. Empower us, your body, to enfold and protect those broken in body, mind, or spirit through your all-embracing grace, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who taught us to say when we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We want to thank you for remembering your church and remembering your community and its needs and how you answer those needs. Beloved, do not worry, the scripture says, about anything, but in everything, let your request be made known by God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard our hearts and our minds in Jesus Christ. In the assurance of his presence and his promise that we read in scripture, let us confidently offer ourselves to God, knowing that God has already provided all of our needs as we pray to God and give thanks for our offering. Creator God, you are our provider. We offer all that we have and all that we are to you because we belong to you. Bless these gifts and empower us, your church, that through the work of your spirit, we may be a refuge for the needy in their distress, a shelter from the storm and a shade from the heat. Through Jesus Christ, who is our shield and our strength, Amen. We thank you for giving in the many ways that you do, in the offering boxes, online, to the church, uh, office as you give. Thank you so much for always remembering us. I want to say that the Dalton District, you know, we've gone from 12 districts to 8 now. We are leading in the giving of apportionments. So, you know, in this uh, uh, pandemic, we are leading the whole conference in giving of apportionments. So our superintendent, if you were able to go to the church conference, you heard him give a word of thanksgiving for that. So that is something to say. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him, all creatures here below. Praise him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. At this time, Miss Allison will come and sing our anthem for us. Miss Allison? You're actually playing. She's playing our anthem for us.
are we not blessed with great musicians? Whenever we started doing this online thing and I only had this thing that looked at me and I was the only one you saw, I thought you all deserve a lot more than, than that. And we started learning open broadcast system because you've got to have something to run through on Facebook so everybody can be on it. And I said, Helen, I, I need some help. I said, we, we need some people that says, welcome to church. I said, can you get them to hold their phone up and say, welcome to church. I just assumed that everybody knew how to do that and knew how to email it to me and all of that, and I just put it on Facebook. And you learned to do that, and you, you did that. Dr. Scoggins played, and you enjoyed hearing him play, and it's still doing. He would email me things, and I would put it on, on Facebook. Allison and would play, and she would sing, and Annie would play. Philip would, would record it. Ben would do his children's time. All of this was an incorporation of everybody doing, doing their part. And uh, I don't know about you, but I watched a lot of churches online, and uh, I think we kept up pretty good with them. I put uh, my phone on Mary's sun visor, and I said, drive down the road, Mary. And she said, what for? I said, please don't ask what for, just drive down the road. So we got a picture of the road and rain and all kind of things. I even got her to drive through town. I said, if I can find a two-minute song that'll get us from town to church, we'll play that for a beginning. <coughs> and we did. Well, you and I have a lot to be proud of concerning our online service. We've done a lot of creativity, and I pray that that will continue on. I pray that we've got a good head start on that. May we pray this prayer of illumination. Holy Spirit of God, shine your light upon the word and into our hearts this morning, that we may be enlightened with fresh understanding. We ask this in Christ's name we pray. Amen. The book of Matthew, the 22nd book of Matthew, verses 1 through 14, the third parable that Jesus tells. Jesus says, once more Jesus spoke to them in parables saying, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his servants to call those who had made, who had been invited to the wedding banquet, but they would not come. Do you find that strange? I hope you do. I hope you go, what? That's why it's told that way. Because when Jesus said this, the people who were hearing him would go, say what? Again, he sent other servants saying, tell those who have been invited, look, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen, and my fatted calves have been slaughtered, and everything is ready. Come to the wedding feast. But they made light of it and went away, one to his farm, another to his business, while the rest seized his servants, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged. He sent his troops, destroyed those murderers, and burned their city. Then he said to his servants, the wedding is ready, but those invited were not worthy. Go therefore into the main streets and invite everyone you find to the wedding banquet. Those servants went out into the streets and gathered all whom they found, both good and bad. So the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he noticed a man there who was not wearing a wedding robe. 
and he said to him, friend, and if you ever read this word, friend, in Jesus' parable, that someone said to him, friend, um, he's not his friend. Whenever he would say friend, I thought he meant friend. He says friend, but that's not what he means. Friend, he said. How did you get in here without a wedding robe? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the attendants, bind him hand and foot and throw him into the outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. Here ends the reading. Are these God's words <laughs> for God's people? Well, we pray that they are. Thanks be to God. This is the third parable, brothers and sisters, that Jesus tells in Matthew. Luke uh, has the first two parables, and this parable is told in connection with the question Jesus is asked by the high priest and the religious people of the day. You'll recall that question. Jesus just got through cleaning house at the temple, and they said, by what authority do you do these things? You know, Jesus can rearrange your house furniture. I ask you this, has Jesus ever rearranged your house furniture? Has Jesus ever come into your house and sees that things are sort of out of order, and he starts putting it in order. Sometimes, most of the time, this is very painful. One of the things that uh, I avoided at Candler School of Theology was having to go through CPE. That's code for clinical pastoral education. Normally you were put in a CPE if you were in SM, <laughs> supervised ministries, all these things are buried. That Candler don't have, I don't think Candler has much of this anymore. Because you would be in this group and you would say things and they would see that something was needed in your life and they would ask you if you would like to go to a CPE to work on yourself. The right answer was sure. The wrong answer was, I don't think so. When I was sitting there, the people that they asked this question to were people who had a lot more education than I did. They were on a social ladder a lot higher than me. And I thought, oh my gosh, if these people are being asked to go to CPE, I better get in the front line because I'm next. Well, I didn't get into CPE until later on in my ministry when I was at Wood Station and had the opportunity to work for hospice in Dalton. At then, Georgia made a requirement that if you were a hospice chaplain, you had to have one unit of CPE. Well, I didn't have that. Well, one unit of CPE at Erlanger was, and I need to emphasize, was $500. But later I learned that you don't have to be clergy to take it. You can also be laity. And what you go there for is to see how ministry affects you and how you affect ministry. One of the reasons that I avoided CPE is I didn't believe that anything was wrong with me. You need to laugh at that because that is very funny. <laughs> I thought CPE were for people that had something wrong with them. I later, later learned that we all have something wrong with us. When I went up there, they said, well, why are you here? I said, well, I want to be and I need a CPE to do hospice clergy visits. 
And they said, well, um, what do you struggle with? <laughs> I said, well, have you got all day? I said, well, probably I struggle the most with what I cannot control. I really lose it when I lose control. And that's self-evident. Don't talk to Mary about this because she can give testimony to this. But when I was in my office and I was running the service through OBS, Open Broadcast System, and it would freeze up, all H-E double toothpicks <laughs> would break loose because I had lost control. We were at 50 and when it froze up we went down to 40, 30, 20. We started dropping like flies and I said oh no and I start doing all of this stuff Timothy says to Mary, what's wrong with daddy? <laughs> Timothy's never seen me like this. Well, son, your father lost control of OBS. I couldn't make it do what I wanted to. And after I got it back, everybody was sort of gone. I would have been gone too. Well, Randall's froze up again. Let's turn the channel. I mean, it happened more than once. So the people at Erlanger said, we have the perfect place for you. We've got a place in trauma where we have an X marked and all clergy stand there facing the table where they will bring them in on the helicopter and you just stand there and you just watch. I said, the trauma unit? They said, yes. Here's your pager. You remember those pagers you used to put on your waist that would beep? That's what I had. They said, don't drop it in the toilet. We lose a lot of them in the toilet. So I kept it and guarded it with my life. And when it would go off, it would say roll over, which meant a car rolled over. Helicopter 20 minutes in, which meant everybody started going to the ER. Really, it was called ED. I don't know if they've changed it now. It was emergency room. Now they call it the emergency department. I don't know if they still have those codes or not. So I would go down there, and I would stand on my X, and I would face the table. And they would bring this individual in, and all I could do is stand there and watch everybody else work on them. Some would survive and some would die. And I got to write a paper on that each time that happened and they used to say to me, Randall, what was it like to stand there and watch knowing that you couldn't do anything to help them? I said, well, I did do something. I prayed. They said, well, did everybody survive? And I said, well, no, not everybody. They said, so what was it like not to be in control? I said, well, I, I must admit it was very uncomfortable. Why was it very uncomfortable? Well, because I wanted to fix things. I wanted to help things. And it was just really hard to accept that I just couldn't help everybody who comes through. They said, well, what are you going to do about that? Well, I took another semester after it was over because it took me six months to learn that there's only one thing you can do when you can't do anything. You know what that is? Trust. Trust who? Trust God. When I can't fix something, when I can't make something happen the way I want to, I have to trust someone who can. And I have to learn to remember to breathe. And maybe count to ten. And to let myself know that the universe doesn't completely depend upon me. 
Before I was a United Methodist minister, I was a photographer, a wedding photographer. And I could tell you some stories concerning weddings. I can tell you stories about grooms that showed up and how they showed up, as well as brides showing up and how they showed up. I can share with you pastors and how they felt about weddings as well as getting everybody together to photograph the wedding. This morning we have a parable about a wedding banquet and I don't know about you but I enjoy getting invitations. I don't know if you do or not. I was watching a host on TV, a talk host, who says that they love to get invitations to birthday parties, weddings, anniversaries. They just love to get invitations. And they said, oh, do you go to these? And the person said, no, I just like to get them. <laughs> and they said, well, why do you like to get them? She said, well, I just like to know that someone's thinking about me and would love for me to come, but I'm really not interested in coming, so I just don't go. I ask you, if Queen Elizabeth had sent you an invitation to a royal wedding, would you go? Or would you look at your calendar and say, oh my gosh, I've got something on that day. I can't make it. So you and I are going to tell the Queen of England, who's got a banquet, who's going to have things there and who's going to invite people that you and I would probably never see and never experience again in our life that we're not going to come? Well, hopefully if we said no, she wouldn't kill us or wouldn't harm us. But one of the things that Jesus wanted the chief priests and Pharisees to hear was that when God sends out his invitation. We need to think about clearing our calendars and attending his banquet. Because no one throws a party like God. A story is told about a prostitute in New York City. And as she was in the bar, there was a man there in the bar who was eating and heard that it was her birthday in the coming days of the week. And he said, let's throw her a birthday party. So they got together and got a cake and everything and got her in there. And they started singing happy birthday to her. And they went over to this guy and they said, by the way, who are you? He said, well, I'm, I'm a pastor who lives right down the street. What? 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 You're a pastor and you wanted to throw this prostitute a birthday party? Sir, what kind of church you run? Do you have birthday parties for all prostitutes? He said, if you do, I would love to come to your church. Jesus said to the religious people, there are people coming into the kingdom of God before you. And it's people who believe that John's baptism was credentialed by God and that God had sent Jesus into the world to save us of our sins. I ask you, do you have your invitation? And have you accepted it? And have you RSVP'd? <laughs> have you told him that you will be there. Have you got your dress? <laughs> Have you said yes to your dress? And that dress is Christ. You and I used to sing a song many years ago. Are you washed in the blood? and the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb. Are your garments spotless? 
Are they white as snow? Oh, be washed in the blood of the Lamb. And what that means is this. Have you and I accepted Christ as our Lord and Savior? Have we confessed our sins to him and trust his grace that we are in him and he is in us and the mind which he has we are adopting and we are thinking and we are living out because we know that the only people who stay in the wedding bank are those who are dressed properly. And those who are dressed properly are the ones who have washed their garments, their life, in the life of Jesus Christ. I pray that you and I today can say, that's me. My invitation, I have. My RSVP, I have sent. My name is on the roll, and when the roll is called up yonder, <laughs> you and I will be there. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now. I see T'was grace that taught My heart to fear And grace my fears relieved How precious did That grace appear the hour I first believed. Through many dangers, toils, and snares, I have already come. We his grace that brought me safe thus far and grace will lead me home when we've been there ten thousand years bright shining as the sun Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? 
Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Amen. I love things that happen that aren't planned. Someone said, Lord, do something that's not in the order of worship. <laughs> love that. Thank you, Dr. Scoggins. Brothers and sisters, hear this charge. You and I are the sons and daughters of God. God in Christ has made that so. Now hear this benediction. Now go, living lives and sharing the good news. In word and deed, in the name of Christ we pray. Amen? Amen. Amen.